without knowing the foundations to building your coaching business, you're going to always find yourself in a cycle of trying to figure it out like me for years doing research, for years studying, for years, let me join this podcast, for years, let me join this YouTube channel, for years, just wandering around and trying to play, you know, whack-a-mole or trying to piece together a a puzzle piece, a puzzle board and not know what to do in order to get clients and build a successful business. You ever tried putting together, um, uh, you ever had a puzzle? But there was, but you just couldn't find all of the right pieces to put in place. And you're like, damn, like, what do I need to do in order to really like see the full picture? That's how I feel like a lot of people are are moving in a business is like they're getting little bits and pieces from different places, but because they don't have the mentorship and the coaching, they find it continuously hard to succeed and start a successful coaching business. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna be doing some interviews. What is good, my people? What's up? What's up? So uh, I'm going to bring Denise on. By the way, Denise, this is a real coaching session. So we're really going to work this work this through with you because there's a lot of folks on here that um, there's a lot of folks who they really need the help, but they don't know what it's like to get coaching. You know what I'm saying? Because they kind of just starting or they never really had a coach before. So this is really like a taste of what it looks like, at least coaching with me specifically. So Denise, what is going on, superstar? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing phenomenal, taking it one day at a time. We got Denise in the building, ladies and gentlemen. And um, uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for this because, um, you know, Denise, you know, you rocking with us, right? You rocking with us now in terms of coaching. And um, there's a lot of folks, there's a lot of folks out here that haven't made the decision to get coaching yet. And there's a lot of folks who, they're on the edge of like, is this really valuable? You know what I'm saying? You know, I've been rocking with Isaac for a few months, as you already know. And I know you kind of low key been behind the scenes, like looking and stuff, right? So, um, but there's a lot of folks who are just like, yo, I don't know if coaching is for me, or, you know, they don't really know what it's like to be coached, especially in their business. So this is a real coaching session and we're doing this for the benefit of the community. But um, it's kind of like folks are flying on the wall, but, I'm, but we're really gonna like, we're really gonna do this today. All right, cool. All right, y'all excited? Go ahead and drop excited in the chat, and let's and let's and let's get this going. So, um, Denise, let's kind of start from just so everybody has context. Where are you from? Who's your ideal client, and what are you looking to help them achieve? So, I am uh, currently in Westchester County in New York. Um, who is my ideal client? That would be. Uh, parents, caregivers, um, nonprofit organizations that are looking for guidance um, to help families, the community with children and youth with special health care needs, um, more specifically uh, children with autism, uh, young adults with autism, and navigating that world because it is a specific sort of lifestyle that one has to navigate through. And I navigate it myself uh, with three children that are on the spectrum and autistic and uh, looking to bring a level of structure, a level of resourcefulness and uh, ingenuity to that lifestyle so that it doesn't encompass or, or overtake you and that's really what I'm here to do when it comes to the not-for-profits, consulting um, with them to help them also deal with these families in a like fashion where they're giving all that they need, not some of what they need because they don't always know how to approach. And being that I have certain backgrounds and I have the actual experience, um, I'm definitely quite authoritative that area all right love it love it love it all right so let's so let's do it so let's start so um um in terms of like give me what's the first question that comes to your mind or what do you feel like is the the biggest challenge that you're faced with right now elephant in the room money um it's getting this particular population of people that i would be uh looking towards if if they have the funds to then be able to allocate them 
toward the investment, which would be me, um, to bring that level of security to an extent that they're going to be able to deal with this lifestyle in a whole new and dynamic way that they understand what investment means, sort of like what you're trying to do with your coaching, talking to people about investing in themselves, which in turn invests into the community and making them see that it's less about the price tag and more about the value. Mm -hmm. Got it. So really getting the folks to invest themselves so you can really help take them to the next level, right? So um, right. these are folks too. So I guess the first question is, are you already having these conversations with folks and offering them the ability to make that investment? Or this is more like speculation and it's like based on what I'm hearing or seeing. Like, where's this, where are you, where are you getting this, this data from? So like many people, we offer um, our solicited and unsolicited advice, help, suggestions, and whatnot. Um, and I came to a conclusion that I wanted to um, put a value uh, monetarily on what I know and what I share. And that bridge has not been solidified yet. So it has been a bit challenging to keep information to myself when I know it could benefit people. Yeah. But um, I'm learning that I do have to value what I know and yeah. to bring it to a level where people are going to solicit it from me, not me offering it. So that's, that's where I am right now. Got it. Got it. So um, how much is your services? How much is your, your coaching right now? I'm starting out right now at 2500 for mm -hmm. four weeks. Got it. Um, Five hundred for four weeks. So let's stop. Let's stop there for a second. So you said is really getting them to see that they need to invest in themselves. So have you made that offer to anybody yet? Two two individuals, yes. Two individuals. Okay, and and the response, in the response was what from like what what did they what did you get from? Well, who were they first of all? Who were they like? What was the profile of them like? So give a brief explanation of the profile because there may be a certain, the reason I'm asking is because there might be a certain profile of people that it might not necessarily be a great fit for, but we don't know yet. So give me the profile of the person and then give me the response once you, once you made the, the offer to them. So one is a social worker who has a son that is uh, 15 years old. He's autistic. He's in a school, a uh, residential school. Um, and is able to do certain things for himself. She's having a hard time, uh, not just monetarily, but also with work and with dating and all, all that encompasses uh, what she's needing to do for herself and for her son. And although she would like to invest and in, because she knows I'm, I'm able to sort of map things out and as long as she just kind of like trust the process, she would get far it's making that step, that leap, where she has other expenses. And right. clearly, you know, they need to be met. And this would be something that's a little more idealistic and more conceptual for her, rather than saying, this is something I need, like medication, like, you know, something that she would need today. What, and so what that... You know so let me, and by the way, if I cut you off, that's just because I want to make sure we, I, like, we can get sure. as much in as possible. So what, um, so what's the end result? So like, give me, so she's, she's investing $2,500 in this program. What's the end result that you're promising for her and her son? Right now, it's breaking down all of the core issues that are going on that she's been having trouble with, not just in the net, in the last 12 months, but what's been happening that she's having trouble with and what is to come. Uh, for example, uh, guardianship versus whatever other um, alternatives there might be. I have answers for that. Correct. Got it. Okay. All right, cool. So a couple things. A um, couple things. First is um, the offer, right? So your offer is essentially, I'm going to work with you and your, your child for four weeks. Um, 
I think four weeks is way too short. The reason I'm saying four weeks is too short is because, um, you know, change definitely doesn't happen overnight, you know, right? But really, it's too short because people need people need time to implement because you'll be surprised how fast four weeks, like four weeks, is. <laughs> like that's very, very quick. So um, that's one thing. And then when you say four weeks, it's kind of like psyching yourself out because it's not really four weeks. It's only like four hours, right? Because you're not working with them all week. So you got to kind of keep that in mind. But what I would say is one, you got to make the offer more sexy. If you, you know, my clients know, and you'll you'll hear more about it in the program. But I talk a lot about an executive offer, and I, and I talk a lot about making what you have sexy. The reason you got to make it sexy is because they have to see joining your program and me having Denise as my coach is is a way better investment than me keeping the money in my pocket. And that's really how they have to think because if if they're like, oh, okay, it sounds good, but I'm not willing to get the money. I don't have the money and I'm not willing to get the money to do it. That means that what you have that is not, you know what I'm saying, is not enticing enough for them to say, you know what, or they don't, they're not feeling the benefits. Although you like, y'all can help me with so many things. Oh my God, you don't know. I'll blow your mind. But they don't, because they don't feel that and they don't understand that, to them, they perceive it as, okay, it's nice, but it's not a necessity. People really have to feel like it's a necessity. So the best way to do that is to make it sexy. So what are some ways to make it to make your offer sexy? So one is you can give more time. Like a lot of time people are afraid of, yo, can I really do this? Do I have the time to do it? You know, I got all of these things going on with my kids, myself, I got this, I got my job, I'm doing this, this nonprofit, I gotta go to the hospital, I gotta right. So they they wrapped up in so many things, they're afraid that they're gonna look up and the program is gonna be over and they're out twenty five hundred. Right. So that so the thing is. You want to give people time, give people enough time to where you can actually help them really get results. You know what I'm saying? So I would say extending that four weeks into about four to six months. That would be the first thing that I would say. That makes it more sexy because it's like, okay, now I have time now, right? I have time to actually get results, I have time to see things that are going to happen. So I would say extend it. Um, in terms of making an offer more sexy, I will focus on um, adding additional deliverables. Right. So additional deliverables like um, I think you might have saw the video where I talked about um, the three P's. Right. We talked about um, principles, product and price. Right. So the principles are like your deliver. I mean, uh, um, your product is like your deliverables that you're going to add as part of your offer. So I would say something like like give me some examples of outside of just coaching with you. That in itself is very valuable. But what else could you give? What else could you give this person to really solve their challenges, alleviate their pain? You know, and I'll give you some examples. It could be, you, you might know a therapist. You could give them a free one-on-one -on -one session with a therapist. Um, you know, it could be, it could be certain books. It could be, you know, I don't know, going to the spa. I don't care what it is, but what, anything in the world, what could you give them to really help them resolve this challenge faster or easier?